you lot. Miller Corner here, coming to you with hair that I really wish I got cut before we went into lockdown if I'd have known I'd get so many comments about it. Today it is incredibly windy and we're working inside the GTV anyway, so I'll join you in there. That's better, not getting absolutely blown to pieces anymore and nor is my magnificent hair flowing like I'm in some sort of shampoo advert. We're gonna start on the interior of the Alpha today because as I showed in the video going over in depth all this car's problems, the interior is pretty much its best bit. It's in really good condition, everything works and it's a genuinely really nice place to be apart from a couple of small bits of trim that are letting the side down. Now first up we're gonna get done with the gator on the gear lever and the handbrake. I have got some replacements but first we've gotta get the old ones off. So the audio companions have made a return. That's right, they are back. We're doing more interior bits, which means we need to companion some audio. So without further ado, let's get this bit of trim on the center console off. We should better then get the gear stick gator off. Then we can get the handbrake gator off and then I can show you my rather natty replacements. I've got a few different audio companions to hand to help me. So I reckon first of all, we're gonna start by levering under here. And sure enough, you can see already that the clips are starting to release. Aha! Just undo that little button, which should, there you go, release it off the gear lever. And we are away. Fantastic. This is past its best. It's a bit saggy, it's a bit floppy. There's a little nick in it there. And it's definitely seen better days. So what I'm gonna do is get a screwdriver, I think, try and prise these clips off. This whole thing should release from this plastic bezel and then I can get the new replacement on. I've just seen on here, look, there's a build date, 27th of September, 1999. So Giuseppe or Luigi or other stereotypical, probably racist Italian names. If you're watching a new build by Alpha, bellissimo, buongiorno, other Italian words. But I think it might just be a case of pulling these off. It, oh, okay. So what I'm learning here, it's a slightly dangerous thing to learn, is that these might require some force. Forcing. Yeah, that worked. I was about to say insert jokes about Italian build quality, but given how well this is clipped on, don't. There are no jokes about Italian build quality here. This is genuinely good. Right, all the clips are off. All the clippy-offy clips, anyway. I know what I'm talking about. And now I think all these need to come off. Ben, ah, yeah, back. Join me when I've popped all these clips off, because I'm going to take various bits of skin off my knuckles, as I already have. Okay, so I popped one of the clips, and the entire metal bracket just came out. Um, it's not split or anything, it's meant to do that, that's presumably how you join it in. And there we have it. The old gator is removed it did. So I've given this bezel a quick clean out, because never you're going to get a better opportunity than when it's out of the car. And I've also plastered my finger up to avoid me just bleeding all over my beautiful interior. Alpha ownership is as challenging as people say, but more physically than mentally or financially, as it turns out. The old gator is out and I might reveal my new one. Behold, we're going red, ladies and gentlemen, because black is a bit boring. I don't like a whole red leather interior, but I think some little splashes of red gonna add that little bit of extra Italian class. So I've got one for the handbrake as well. These are about 20 quid for the pair delivered, and it is genuine leather that just, oh, it's even got that amazing leather smell to it as well. What we need to do is fit this into here. I hope everyone else is paying attention, because I wasn't. Fitting the gator proves tricky, as I have to wrap it around the metal frame before slotting the frame into the plastic bezel under tension and reattach all the metal clips. This is made harder still by the thick leather being a tighter fit than whatever the old one was. But eventually... Right, the new gator for the gear lever is on, and this was an asshole to fit. Because the old one that we pulled out, whether it was original or not, I'm not quite sure, wasn't real leather. It was sort of fake pleather PVC plastic crap. It was about three millimeters thick, so obviously it just slotted straight on with the clips. Because the new one is genuine real leather, it's really thick. So getting this bracket on the inside, then bending all the clips onto it and trying to do all this without shattering the plastic bezel was tense, and in the end, it wasn't even a one-man job. I spared you having to watch it on camera because it took about three weeks, but nonetheless, it is now ready to go on. Now, these little ears at the front have to go on first, so, there. Aha! That, ladies and gentlemen, is in. Velcro that baby up, and then button that baby up. That is on, and how much better does that look? You can't smell this, but... Oh, nice, fresh, leathery smell in the interior now as well. You may remember also that I complained of a rattly gear knob. Well, it turns out that this bit here unscrews. It's held in by an Allen key, much like the Seicento one. And in the ashtray, 
I found the Allen key that does it. So I unscrewed that, tightened it up, and indeed, pretty much tight now. I might just give that one more quick squeeze up in a minute to make sure it's tight, and then we can move on to the elephant in the room, which once again is a popper stud and some Velcro, and that does then just lift off. But as we said before, this frame is uh, in need of some love. <sighs> Who said our throwing ship was easy? This is the gator for the handbrake, which you might notice is a little bit worse for wear compared to its lovely new leather replacement one, hello. The frame is knackered. It was actually glued into the frame from the factory, not just kind of velcroed or elasticed into it. It was actually glued into this frame. So I've got to get all these into something resembling the framework for a handbrake gator and to glue it all back together, some nice high performance future glue and hopefully fingers crossed put this whole rather frustrating gator saga to bed gluing the frame back together is fiddly since the thin plastic is only made weaker still by being broken so much lining everything up perfectly and allowing the glue to tack takes time but dad then turns up with the perfect companion tea has arrived all is right with the world Eventually the frame is glued back together and left to dry and harden for a couple of hours. Right, while that glue's drying, you may remember the GTV's slightly unfortunate door card situation. On both sides we've got some rather unfortunate damage stroke massive holes in them. These might be repairable with some plastic weld or something, or maybe we could put something over to cover them up, but ideally the Alpha does need new door cards. Well, would you look at that? A new Alpha door card. And he's got a friend, look, another Alpha door card. There is a little mark there where the seatbelt buckle on the car these came off was threatening to do the same thing that's been done to my car. They are far, far better. And crucially, neither of them have got a bloody hole in them. So we'll start with the driver's one since that's the one I've unwrapped first. And I reckon, Let's get them on. Removing the door card is relatively straightforward as parts like window switches and the door pocket come off with ease. The speaker grill is popped off before the speaker itself unbolts, after which I begin unbolting the main body of the door card. What I was just about to say is how easy the disassembly is. This one bolt behind the electric window switch, however, is a different size to all of the other bolts on the door. Thanks, Alpha. I thought having two different sizes of bolt holding the door on would be as alpha as this got. Do you see these allen headed bolts holding the door card on that are a completely different size to the other two? Do you see those? Cheers alpha! With about 40 various tools on hand to undo the various bolts, I push on, loosening the card with an audio companion before sliding the card itself up and off the door. Dad then unplugs the tweeter, door handle and courtesy light and it's free. Then it's a matter of transferring over the tweeter and the leather pad. The second bit takes longer than it should on account of these plastic clips. You've got about a 50-50 chance of removing them without breaking them on removal, and about as much chance again of it not flying across the room at 800 miles an hour if you do get it off. Eventually the pad's secured and it's time to go back to the GTV to fit the new door card. The door lock pin is slid through the hole and everything else is plugged in before we slot the card onto the door frame. This is a bit fiddly to line up correctly, but eventually we get it seated. Oh, and a word to the wise, make sure the door release cable isn't completely taut when it's refitted to the handle and it's got this little bit of extra slack in it. Otherwise the door won't close properly and that means the car won't lock and you'll have to take the whole door card off again to readjust it. Not that I speak from experience or anything. Other than that though, refitting is mercifully simple with everything screwing back in easily. Screwing stuff into a door card needs to be done carefully because over tightening it might crack the plastic and I think I might go cataclysmic at this point if that happens. Thankfully though, cracks are avoided and eventually it's done. How much better does that look now? It's not broken, not scratched, not dinged, there's no holes in it. And if you were in any doubt over whether this door card needed replacing or not, yeah, the old one was holier than the Pope. All that remains now is to get the passengers one done, which would be about an hour's work for most people, but for me, just a snap of the fingers. Skeptics will point out that it's quite obviously a different time of day and that the plaster on my hand has gone, to which I say it was getting late and my mum made curry, shut up. That looks 
absolutely awesome, genuinely really, really nice. And we've even come up with a fix to make sure that it doesn't happen again. On the seat belts here, we've put some safety pins on it. And what that means is the seat belt buckle physically can't dip below that point. And that means even if you do let it swing with full gusto when you get out of the car, it cannot go low enough to punch a hole in the door card again. That might well have saved these door cards from a similar fate. Anyway, let's jump in the car and get that handbrake gator sorted. The frame for the handbrake gator is completely fixed. Look at that, from broken pieces to now a pretty much complete frame. And now I think all we need to do is get it over this frame and elasticate it round the bottom of it and then slot it into there and hold it on. That proves to be quite difficult because of how snugly fitted the gator is. Things take a turn for the worse when refitting, as the already weak frame breaks again under tension. At this point, I've had it with this broken frame. It's apparent the super glue isn't strong enough, so we fill it with a thick bead of Sikaflex and leave it overnight to harden. For those of you asking why I'm so determined to fix it, it's worth remembering that a brand new replacement is £75. While the Sikaflex is drying though, there's another improvement to make. You might notice the floor mats. Rather nice, right? No, these turned out to not even actually be car floor mats. They're just pieces of carpet that have been cut roughly in the shape of the floor pan of the GTV. And that means if you press the pedals even vaguely hard, they will just slide into the footwell and potentially get your feet trapped under the pedals. It ain't safe. These are going straight into a bin. I've got some lovely GTV floor mats, which whilst they're not official alpha ones, they are shaped to fit the car and those can go in there like that. I feel a bit safer knowing that the floor mat actually fits and stays in place. And for only seven quid for four, can't complain. The next day, the Sikaflex is dry. So we use some metal clips to pin the gator onto the repaired frame. With two of us keeping it taut and clipping it in place. Do you know what? I think that's in. After a few yanks on the handbrake to make sure it's secure, we can confirm that the troublesome handbrake gator is finally done. What a transformation from an old crappy gear stick gator and a completely knackered handbrake gator and two door cars with patches of leather glued over enormous holes punched in them to this. And the GTV interior has gone from nice to pretty much Perfect. Those handbrake and gear lever gaiters were incredible. They look and feel the part and they most definitely smell the part. They weren't expensive. I'll leave a link in the description if you do want to get them. I'm not sponsored. They're just awesome. And frankly, 70 quid for a pair of new door cards delivered for the difference they make from having holes in the old ones. You can't complain of that either. What's more, new floor mats mean my feet aren't slipping all over the place. And now this is an interior which, after a good clean, I would be happy to take people out in. You might also notice that the mirrors are off. Stay tuned, that's coming next time. For now, thanks very much for watching everybody. Catch you soon and have a good one.